Welcome to the number one source for information, news, and opinion on your Columbus Blue Jackets. This is CBJ in 30, presented by Telhio Credit Union. You can also find the audio version on the CBJ Radio SoundCloud page, Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, Google Play Music, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Now here's your host, Bob McGilligan. Welcome to another edition of CBJ and 30 presented by Telhio Credit Union from Amelie Arena in Tampa, where the Blue Jackets opened up a two game series last night and lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Three to one was the final score. It was another good performance, a gutsy performance by the Blue Jackets. But again, they just didn't have enough to defeat the defending Stanley Cup champions. Right now, let me tell you about Telhio Credit Union. At Telhio, back in 1934 is when they started to put people above everything else. Their customers are the most important thing to them. And they've continued that mantra through today. That's what they do. That's how you get treated when you're a customer at Telhio Credit Union. So why should you join? Well, the answer to that question and many more is on the website at telhio.org. Go through, you can find out why you should join a credit union. You can see all the different services that they have. You can find out the perks that go along with those services as well. If there's something you can't find, if it's during business hours, look on the right-hand side of your screen. There is a live chat option. Click on that, and somebody will help you navigate your way through. Tell Ohio Credit Union. The question that you have is, why not go with them over a regular bank? You're going to find your answers at tellhio.org. So for the Blue Jackets last night, as I said, it was a respectable game. It was a good game. It just wasn't a win. The only goal came off the stick of Seth Jones. It did come on the power play, a power play that I think in the last couple of games – has looked much better than it has all year long. Uh, they are they're winning the faceoffs. They're keeping the puck in the zone, uh, even when it does get knocked outside the blue line. The entries have been much better for whatever reason. They've relaxed on the power play, and it's paid dividends. Seth Jones getting his fifth of the year gave the Blue Jackets a one to nothing lead, and it stayed that way until late in the second period, when the Tampa Bay Lightning came into the zone. Yanni Gord, who has been a thorn in the side, that line of Yanni Gord, Blake Coleman. And Barclay Goudreau, go back to the playoffs last year. They were a pain in the neck, and they continue to be that for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Johnny Gordon comes in on the left wing side. He sends a pass over into the right wing circle. Coleman takes a shot, and Elvis got a piece of it, but he couldn't keep it out of the net. That tied the game at one. And then in the third period, again, Tampa was able to uh, – they got some pressure. There, there was a turnover. They got pressure off of it. Uh, they come in, they take a shot, it gets denied, and the puck comes right back to Andre Palat, and he puts it in the net to make it a two-to-one game. And then the Blue Jackets pulled the goaltender with two minutes and 58 seconds left in the third period. And again, like they did on the power play, they controlled a lot of that. Uh, they kept the puck in the zone. Every time it came out, they came back and they got it. There was one miscue where Yanni Gord, about six feet from the net, got the puck and he hit the post. But the Blue Jackets came back from that. They brought it up the ice. But Patrick Laine had been out there for the entire time, and he goes to take a shot from inside the blue line. He fans on it. Puck comes right to Blake Coleman, and without thinking, he just fires it down the ice and splits the posts. Empty net goal, Coleman's second of the game, and that set the final at 3-1. to one. So the Blue Jackets continue to be winless on this road trip. They have one game left to try to get a win, and that is on Sunday night at 7 o'clock in Tampa. Well, Josh Dunn played his fifth game as a Columbus Blue Jacket. Fifth game in the National Hockey League last night. You know what? He did go to the penalty box two times in the game. One time he lost a stick, and he reached out and grabbed a hold of one of the Lightning players, and that got him a trip to the penalty box. He got another penalty later in the game. But all in all, he continues to go out there and play that role of fourth-line center pretty well. And again, he's a defensive-minded centerman, so playing the fourth line has worked for him so far. Josh Dunn comes from a big, big hockey family. He has five siblings, and all six of the kids in the Dunn family play hockey. And Josh has two older sisters, Jessica and Jinsey. Not only do they play hockey, but they both played women's hockey at Ohio State. Their careers at Ohio State are over, but the job of following their brother, rooting him on, and being there for him, well, that job, they've always been rooting him on. But being there for him and helping him to stay in the National Hockey League, that job is just beginning. Earlier this week, I had a chance to catch up with Jessica and Jinsey and talk about the Dunn family, the hockey legacy that they are establishing, and how they feel about their brother Josh being a Blue Jacket. First of all, I just want to talk to you about uh, when it all started, when uh, when the Dunn family became such a hockey family. Now, uh, we talked to Josh 
uh, and he, you know, he admitted that uh, he kind of turned you guys from figure skaters into hockey players. So uh, who was it both at the same time or who was the first one that said, yeah, I think that's a good idea to let's, let's go ahead and make this transition. I think it was probably both of us at the same time. I mean, I wasn't much of a figure skater, so I was just kind of did it because my parents put me in it. But the three of us are so close in age um, that whatever one did, like all three of us did. So Josh probably didn't tell you that my sister and I were ballet. So Josh was in ballet with us. Um, and so when he went into play hockey, it's just easier for my parents, I guess, to throw all three of us in it. And then by the time, like, we all three really liked it. And then by the time the other three came around, I mean, they were basically born in the hockey rink. So that's how they got into it too. Jessica, how competitive did it get right, especially from the beginning with uh, everybody playing the sport? Yeah, we're a really competitive family and it's not just sports. I think it's just everything we do, board games, um, watching movies, making sure we picked up more than the other person. It's just everything. Um, our parents were both athletes. They weren't hockey players. Uh, my dad played soccer. My mom played basketball. But from a young age, we've just always been competitive. And as we've gotten older, it's gotten into more, um, I guess, graceful competition. We can respect each other more now, but it's always been good. We've always been people to push each other and also have each other's back. So it's just been, yeah, very cool. So Jesse, did that, the, did that competition just come from you know, being, being kids, being siblings, or I, I'm not saying that your, your mom and dad said, Hey, go ahead and compete against each other. But like, did you pick up on stuff or was it just because, Hey, you want to beat your sister. She wants to beat you. And then your brother gets involved. I mean, I think it's just, we all hate losing. And I have seen that in both my parents. So it's probably something genetic in it. Who knows? But like from a young age, like we could not lose. And like Jess said, like we made everything competitive. I mean, there was a point like board games became contact sports in our household because people would not lose. So I think it was just like, and it wasn't like a, it wasn't like cutthroat competition, but it was like just really intense. Everyone is putting, giving their best effort. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of that was just my parents really instilled like, do your best, like always do your best. And then it's like, it gets to the point where like, if I'm doing my best, I'm not losing. So. And how did that how did that get all of you so much closer to Jessica because you know you guys have said you're you're all pretty close in age that that competition brings you together it makes you tighter as a family doesn't it it does and i think it allowed us to really see the worst of each other but also really appreciate the best when it came around and i think it's just having six siblings or i guess five siblings is just so unique and we are all very close in age so you learn how to relate to people older, younger, boy, girl, um, sensitive, not sensitive. So you kind of develop a whole sense in your own of your own person, but you learn how to play with other people. Like we consider ourselves our own team, you know? So going into team sports, it was easy because we know there's so many factors. So we learned how to just find our role in the team. And over time, our family's gotten really close. So in the beginning, it was just trying to hatch out like what roles we had, but now we all know. So the competitiveness is still there, but I think we're much closer for it and having, you know, been able to push each other to our limits and also know at the end of the day, we love each other more than anyone. Jincy, when you were uh, especially starting to play and you're playing youth hockey and, you know, you're starting to come up in the ranks long before you guys uh, become teammates at Ohio State, tell me about uh, playing and especially playing with the boys in that level of competition. Yeah, um, I would say... I had a better experience than most. Um, I was really lucky. It really isn't easy being the girl on the guys team, but it's also not being, it's not easy for the guys having a girl on the team. Um, and so I was really lucky that I had guys that were really like gracious towards me and invited me in and, and loved having me a part of the team. And so I think when you kind of have that camaraderie in a way, to an extent, like I'm not in the locker room with them or anything, um, it helps so much. And, and, you know, on the ice, they still treated me as an equal, but with the respect that I needed as a female. Um, and so that was great. I had great coaching and just, I love, I love the youth, the youth game for the boys, especially, or like the kind of like that teenage level, because I think the boys just get free reign to be creative. Um, and it's so cool. Like I was lucky I played with really, really good players who were so like, for example, Matthew Chuck was so creative to a point where I think his dad was going to lose his mind at sometimes. But it was so it for me it was so helpful 
Um, and I think that's why you'll see a little bit more shiftiness in my game because I just, you know, that was encouraged um, growing up. And so again, the speed of the game, the pace of the game, um, just like making sure it's crisp. I think that really kind of like helped my development accelerate growing up. Did they shy away from hitting you at all, at least even early on? Not really. I think I tell any girl that is asking me about boys hockey, you're going to get the guys that won't hit you because you're a girl. You're going to get guys that will kind of treat you like another player. They won't go after you, but they won't like go out of their way not to hit you. And then you get those guys that are like, you're a girl, I'm coming after you, watch out. So it kind of is just after a while, you can kind of just tell right away, like, oh, this is a game where I'm taking quick shifts and I'm getting off, or this is a game where it'll be like nice and, and good and fair, things like that. I think what you're saying is uh, the one guy you say, okay, I know this is going to be tough. I've got to brace myself. And when you get the other type of guy, you're just going to exploit that guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, tell me about the, the journey to Ohio State, because it's really kind of, um, it's a great story here now with Josh being with the Blue Jackets, especially uh, you guys are from the St. Louis area, but you wind up going to Ohio State. Uh, what came into that entire decision to, to kind of start that little trend for you two? Yeah, so there were a lot of factors. Um, I knew I wanted to play in the WCHA. I'd heard that was the best league for women at that time. Um, actually, one of my close friends, Katie Harris, um, she was a freshman at Ohio State, and she played through the Lady Blues program with us, and I was really close. Um, so that familiarity factor was important for me. And then my grandpa actually lives in Pickerington, Ohio. My mom's from Ohio. My uncle lives in Ohio. So it was just a good home base. It felt like the right fit. And when I'd gone to visit the school, I loved it. I just, I loved, I liked that it was only six hours from Missouri. It was an easy drive. Um, so I still had my freedom, but it wasn't so far away. The East coast was just too far. I didn't want to fly anywhere. Um, but yeah, I just, I loved the overall fit. It just felt the best to me. And not to say that other schools wouldn't have been and weren't, it just, the culmination of things just, it was right. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I'm so grateful, obviously, that Gen Z followed me, not even followed me, just chose to go there, too, um, because it's very unique going to school with your sister. And again, we're 14 months apart. So my whole life, I had Gen Z there. So having that one year was kind of weird. But then having her back, it just reinforced, like, we're a family and not just, like, you know, members all over. Like, we really like to be together. And so I think it's no surprise in the grand scheme of things that Josh ended up there. Um, not because we were there, but it just Ohio seems to want the Duns. So we'll just go there, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and really, uh, the Columbus and St. Louis, I, I think are they are very comparable uh, in ways, especially like, you know, we go to St. Louis to play the Blues. We're downtown. But if you get outside that downtown area, I think there are a lot of uh, similarities in, in the two cities and the outlying areas. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. It's very familiar. Um, the seasons, um, the people you see, the environment. So yeah, I would say it was just a little, I guess a little different than home, but home still. So Jincy, uh, as she just said, she had a year without you when she went to Ohio State. Uh, uh, that must've been a trying year for you because you wound up right back with her at Ohio State. But uh, I, I imagine that was special for, for both of you. But when you were making that decision, uh, what was going to be best for you? How much of it factored in that your sister was there? I think it was a huge factor. Um, not the biggest factor, but definitely it was a plus having my sister there. We are so close. We've always been close. Um, and not just, you know, in age, but in relationship also, like she's always been kind of a best friend to me and, and me to her. So I think that was huge. Um, and I don't think people really appreciate how rare it is that college, like siblings will go to college and play division one sport together. Um, we were only D partners for one shift, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think it was huge. And, and like my grandpa was there too, as Jess said. And so it was close to home. Um, and yeah, I think, I think family was probably one of the biggest deciding factors in all of it. And I think I think the biggest thing I had when making the decision, because I really, at the end of the day, when I made that decision, I wasn't sure where I wanted to go, but I had peace about it. Um, and it ended up showing me like how, how much I really needed my family close by during my college years. Tell me the difference in styles, Jensi, between you and your sister and the way you play the game. Um, my sister is definitely more steady. And I think that she can just like really be solid and make solid plays and like 
no offense, Jess, like you wouldn't think she was the defenseman that was going to skate down to the end of ice and go coast to coast, but like she could. And I think she led our team in block shots. And I think with me, you're going to get a little bit of, um, oh no, what's going to happen. There's a little bit more high risk, high reward. So I'm going for a play and it's either going to work and look really cool, or it's going to be like, what pull her off. She's done. So I think that Jess is definitely a little bit more safe and sound and I'm a little bit more high risk, high reward, which you would think would complement each other well. But like I said, we played one shift together and <laughs> what was our two goals against? And then we were done for the rest yeah. of our yeah. three years. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll do it in today's game, right? Yeah. Two, you're, you're both a minus two. Something's yeah. going to change. <laughs> Jessica, tell me about, before we get on to, to talk about Josh here and, and more about your family, Ohio State women's hockey. I, I think it goes so much under the radar in Columbus. Uh, it, you know, especially this year, they were back in the Frozen Four. Once again, uh, they get there. What is, as you look at this program from the time you played, look at where it is, you know, how big has it gotten to be? How much respect does it command in women's college hockey? I would say now it commands a lot of respect. I think when I first got there, Uh, I was more, we were trying to build a program. We weren't um, anyone who was really known. We were probably middle, if not lower um, of the pack of the WCHA. But also when I was there, I had three different coaches in three different years. So it was really just trying to find a steady base. And um, when Nadine Muzzerall got there the junior year, and obviously she's still there now, I think that sense of stability really helped the program. And those other coaches obviously offered other perspectives into the game and they helped develop because those girls still had to play for Nadine and go down the line. But I think now it's, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a good program. Like Ohio state women's hockey, they're very good and um, they deserve everything that they've gotten so far. And I think um, they're just a hardworking program too. They're not flashy. They're not going to be, you know, Wisconsin or Minnesota, but they work hard and they really, you know, band around the girls and the team. And I just think we're seeing that happen now. And I just think all those girls who came before me and who are with, you know, with me there, they, you know, laid the foundation. Absolutely. And so I think the girls now are just being able to bring it even higher. And Jincy, when you, when you said that you finally made the decision to go there, was that part of it? Like it was a program that was looking to gain some footing. And then, you know, obviously you two are part of making sure that it's gotten that footing and, and it is getting to that respect level where it is right now. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things for me is I really wanted to go and help build something. Um, there's, you know, Minnesota and Wisconsin are great programs, but they'd already established themselves and, I think what I really loved about Ohio State is like, you know, they looked at players like my sister and my friend um, Jules, who I think was, and I think Jess will agree with me, is probably one of the most underrated players in this women's game. Um, And I love that they kind of recruited other people and gave them an opportunity to play. And I think, like I said, I wanted to go help build something and I wanted to help go to a school and help get it on the map. Um, and make the women's game more competitive for everyone. And I think Ohio State is a fantastic school. Um, I loved the school before I went there. And then, you know, with a, being a Big Ten school, there was no reason that the team shouldn't have been on the map to begin with. They had all the resources. Um, and so, yeah, like I really wanted to go and help build a program and be a part of something special. And not that the other schools aren't special, but um, yeah, to really just get a culture going and and do something cool. Like you never know what's going to happen with a school that doesn't really have a great program and, and where it could go. So, all right. So now I'm going to ask both of you, how did you wind up letting your younger sister go to Minnesota? How she not wind up at Ohio state? <laughs> you want to answer this, Jess? No, I just, I think that we all appreciate our individuality. That's one thing I love so much about having six siblings or five. I keep saying that there's six children, five siblings, but we're all so close and we all seem very similar and we are in a lot of ways but we're very unique like one to one to one to one so Josie just loved Minnesota and it really spoke to her and um, everything that she wanted and so because we could tell how genuine it was obviously you know we'd give her crap go to Ohio State but at the end of the day we wanted Josie to be happy and do what was best for her and she felt it was Minnesota and she had a great freshman year Um, I think it speaks for itself and I know she's really loving it so we're just glad. I will say 
I'm pretty familiar with a handful of the programs and I do, I think Minnesota is a much better fit for her than Ohio state would have been. So I, so like, that's why we don't have at the end of the day, like all that I want for anybody, any college female hockey player is for them to go and have the experience that I did at Ohio state and you have to find the right school for you. And so I want my younger sister to have like the most amazing four or five years of her life. And I think Minnesota is definitely a place where she's going to have that. And I think Ohio state just knowing not that they're not that she couldn't have thrived here, but I think Minnesota is, is the better fit for her for sure. As both of you look at the state of women's hockey, where it is right now, now, especially moving beyond the college ranks, you know, and, and getting into the pro game and the different organizations are, are trying, there's been, try, uh, you know, attempts and failures and, and, and they're trying to find a footing to get on there to really create that professional platform. Jessica, where do you see, uh, well, maybe not where do you see women's pro hockey, but where would you like to see it wind up? Um, I guess I don't know in terms of level. I think the game itself and how much I've seen the girls around me and just girls in general put into it, they put a lot of effort into it. So I think more respect is deserved than what it gets. Um, but I also think there's a lot that still needs to change and you know, growth needs to happen. I think right now we have a few hot spots. Um, in, you know, USA that people can draw from for girls, but as a whole, the country itself hasn't developed. So until we can get, you know, girls from all over like the men do, it's going to be hard to have a whole USA hockey when we're only pulling from a few places. So um, I think the focus right now is just getting into all those little hubs that, you know, they really want to grow the game or where NHL teams are, work on the women's programs there. And then you know, we can't win the whole battle without winning the little wars. We have to, you know, win over the states, introduce more girls all over the country into the game. And I think from there, it'll just happen. I just think right now um, it's a game not many people know about, but it's getting bigger. And I think in due time, it will be as big as it should be. And Jincy, uh, the irony of all of that is when it comes to the women's national program, it's really good. I mean, one, one of the great things to watch every year uh, or every four years rather when the Olympics come around is those women's games, especially the U S and Canada. I mean, I can sit down and watch that over and over and over. And fortunately it seems like every time we're treated to that uh, once or twice throughout the course of that tournament. So, uh, you know, that brand has, has gotten very good. It's about like Jessica said, like just getting more uh, mm -hmm. so that you can spread that out uh, into the professional ranks. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think those games are, are huge they're competitive and it's this super intense rivalry but as a female like I would love to see it not just be USA and Canada but to get more teams involved and and those players are so good and it's and they love it so much and they put just as much into it as the men do but they have no opportunity for a league during the year so you work so I think and I think that's the thing that we're all fighting for right now is to get that opportunity to have a league um because it's so only a handful of women actually make that Olympic team. And like I said, there's a handful of the jewels I have followed. I can think of a handful of other players who are fantastic players, but they may not be in that top 21, 23. And so where are they going to play? They have no place else to play, but they still love it. Like no one wants to go join the real world right away when you're playing a sport that you love. And so I think that rivalry is great, but we want to see more. We want to see more opportunities to have rivalries like that, to have, you know, a St. Louis, a, a Blackhawks rivalry um, that you see during the year for the women as well. Not necessarily those two teams. That's just, we're from St. Louis and we can't like the Blackhawks. <laughs> so it automatically just pops into your brain, right? Yeah. There's, there's no problem with that. Uh, and that's a good point you make too. And about those other countries, I mean, yes, that the USA Canada games are so fun to watch, but yeah, you're right. It's, uh, it's like in any sport, it's great to have uh, two superpowers, but you, you also need to have uh, you need to get to a point where, hey, guess what? This wild card might come in this year and, and they might wreck that or this country might come in this year and wreck that too, right? Yeah, and that's that's something we all want is because we want the most competitive game possible. Like we're, we're out there trying to pursue athletic excellence and the only way you truly do that is by competing against teams who are pursuing the same thing. And so, you know, yes, that USA-Canada rivalry that's there, but like, what would it be like? How much more competitive and fun would the game be to compete against you know, really compete against those other countries um, and competition. Like we love it. Everything we do 
you know, we have to have that drive, um, that pursuit, like that's been ingrained to us since we were young kids. And so, yeah. All right, let's go back to talking about uh, when you were young kids playing with your brother and now showing up in Dallas to watch your brother make his National Hockey League debut for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, Jessica, did you did you feel like in watching Josh and, and his development, like did you feel that this day would come at some point? Uh, yes, I do, or I did, because Josh is such a hard worker, and I think you can watch that and tell by watching the games he's playing now, but he works so hard, and I've never, I told somebody this the other day, I've never heard him complain, like, about practices or about workouts and things that he had to do extra. And wherever he was on the team, worst player, middle of the pack, best player, he just never complained. He always worked hard. And so it didn't shock me that he got to this point. It was just something I think that he was due because again, he loves hockey. And so he was in it for the right reasons. And because it was for the right reasons, I think he totally deserved, you know, the moment and moments he's going to get. You know, when, uh, when we talked to him, uh, one of the big things was he goes out to take a face off against Jamie Ben, like to get things started. And, uh, you know, that's gotta be a surreal moment. It is for the player. You're, you're standing, you know, just two feet from a, a guy that you've watched play, uh, you know, even in the Stanley cup final last year, watching it from afar and, and being his sister, Jinsey, as you're watching something like that and that surreal moment, kind of living it with him, what's uh, what's it mean to you guys? Um, Honestly, for me as a sister, there is nothing in the world better than seeing my siblings live out their dream come true. Like, I think people are like, what's your dream? I'm like, well, my dream is to see my siblings dreams come true. And so I know how badly from a young age, Josh has wanted this. And I think there was so like, if you would have looked at Josh as a hockey player from a young age, you'd been like, no way like that boy, absolutely no way. And so to see where he's come over the years and how hard he's worked because he's loved, he loved something and he wanted so badly to do it. And I think my sister and I have had the opportunity to get to see behind the scenes in Josh's journey. And he really has gone through a lot in terms of outs. Like he, he really has been through a lot. And so to see that moment that he got past all that and he made it to his dream come true to play in the NHL was just absolutely surreal. And I think as a family, like it wasn't an option to not even be in Dallas. And so that's why we were so thankful that the, he was playing on Thursday night. Cause that happened to be the day that we could all be there and not like our family we can't just do anything small we managed to get shirts with his name on the back somehow with his number with like a partial columbus blue jacket sign so that it wasn't like trademarked or anything bad but enough to where you could tell who we were cheering for and, and we were so into the game we were so excited um and just like my in tears basically um when he was starting that the dallas fans in our section started cheering for josh as well and so when we saw he was starting, like my little brother, James, he and I are sitting together and he's like screaming. He's going, he's taking the face off against Jamie freaking Ben. Like what? Um, and so like, it was just honestly for our family, it was when Josh went out for that warm up, like it was just one of hands down, one of the best moments in our family's lives, getting to see Josh do what he was made and born to do. And, and so I think that was just like, that was, it's going to be forever. One of the best moments of our lives. And I get the sense from talking to him that that he feels the same way, Jessica, that it's like that that energy and that attitude that Jensie just talked about is what you are as a family, all six of you. Yeah, we're all we're very close and we really love each other. I mean, I think we're all honestly in constant communication with one another, if not every day, you know, every other day. So being able to be there. I just knew um, when he'd gotten called up, like it, he wouldn't play a game until we all would be there. I just totally felt that. And Thursday, it was the day it happened. And um, again, we all got to be there. And I, you could tell there was no jealousy, envy, anything. Like it was just nothing but like happiness. And we were all so proud. And um, actually our friend, Tyler Watson, Josh's best friend um, who grew up with Josh and was on his first AAA team make the, or made the drive out there too. And so being able to be there in Dallas was just so cool for him, like to see him smiling on the rink and actually be able to kind of let loose and enjoy it was cool. And the Dallas people were great from like the staff, the camera people, the fans, everybody was very nice, very welcoming. So they made it even more, you know, of a better experience for our family. And we're just very grateful. And, and it's a special experience. Like, look, in Columbus, it's been a disappointing season. But to me, this is some of the good stories that come out of, uh, of a bad season because 
Josh gets this opportunity. I mean, he gets signed out of Clarkson. He winds up in Cleveland. He's only there for a couple of uh, games. And lo and behold, he winds up in the National Hockey League. Jincy, how much of uh, a responsibility to you and all your siblings take in helping him to do the most difficult thing now? And that's stay in the National Hockey League. And that can be uh, anything from uh, a text or a call for advice or just a, a sounding board or whatever. How much are you guys going to work at at helping them, not that he needs it. I mean, his play has spoken for itself and his effort, as you guys have both said, that's been there. But being that sounding board, being that that person to help him along, how important is that to you guys now to keep him in this league? Oh, it's huge. I think one of the biggest things our family does great is we believe for each other. Um, and we kind of really carry each other's burdens and champion one another. And so, you know, I think Josh could be someone if maybe things aren't going well and he's really struggling, but he's going to have seven people around him that believe so much that he can't help, but believe in himself as well. Um, Cause belief is so contagious in our family. And so because we know how badly Josh wants us, because we know how much this means to him. I mean, we text him every day. We we're always like, and, and it's not just, it doesn't even have to be about hockey. Like it's, it's anything encouraging. And so, um, that constant communication is huge. And, and I think the biggest thing is we just love each other so much. We believe in each other so much. And um, we know that he, this has been a dream on his heart for forever. And no one wants to just make it to the NHL and play one game. Like people want to have long careers. And so kind of, we just start like speaking those things to Josh, like Josh, like, you know what, maybe this isn't where you want it to be, but a couple of years from now, you're going to be the best at this or, um, you know, it's not just, I think that maybe the, the sixth year you're playing in the NHL, you're going to have the best season of your life. So really just like starting to speak those things into existence for him and just believing them over his life where he can just like grab hold of it and take it and own it and just keep going forward. Yeah. And uh, a big body defenseman or a big, big body centerman who's very defensive minded. This team needs that right now. And uh, I, I think he shows up at a good time with a really good opportunity. Jessica, are you guys going to get a chance to come to Columbus to see him play? Yeah, absolutely. We, I mean, I, we all would definitely love to. I don't know if this is one where we're all going to be there at the same time, but I know we're all going to definitely make the trip to Columbus. And I believe uh, it's May 7th and 8th, 8th and 9th yep. around. There. There's two games in Columbus. So that would be when I could imagine all of us would be out there for. Jensen, who's going to sign more autographs, Josh, or, you know, one of you guys, because if that's possible. If you're in the right spot, you got a shot. Honestly, I think – probably our youngest two siblings are going to shock us all and somehow some way be signing more autographs than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> They're still in high school, right? Yeah. 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 So the uh, what's, what's the scouting report? Might as well get it while we're here because obviously uh, you, you guys have played and your sister's in Minnesota. What's the scouting report? You got to watch out for the youngest one. She's good. We did a shooting competition not that long ago and she beat me and I was fuming I was, my blood was boiling at that one, but she's very good. She's very, very humble, very down to earth. Um, she's going to be really good. And she has, she has Josh's like tenacity and work ethic. And I think James is just going to shock us all and take a complete left turn and do his own thing. And, you know, he'll be taking us on vacation one day. <laughs> <laughs> you, you haven't scheduled another shooting competition. If you're that upset that you lost that one. Is well, I've been practicing. I'm taking this time to practice right now. And then when I feel ready, I'm going to schedule it last minute. Right. So catch her off guard. Let's see, that's, that's a veteran move right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much. It was great talking to you uh, about your own careers at Ohio State uh, and, and about uh, Josh and your entire family. Uh, couldn't be happier for you. Again, he mm. is, uh, <laughs> he, he's a guy that's only played a handful of games in the NHL, but he carries himself like a pro. Testament to your mom and dad and all of you for uh, being there as support for him. So um, I hope he plays here a long, long time. And I hope you get to come to Columbus, not just before the end of this season, but for quite a while. Thanks. Thank you. Many thanks to the Dunn sisters, Jessica and Jincy, for joining me on today's show and talking about Josh and uh, just amazing. And there are three other Dunns that are coming, two girls and another boy. And uh, who knows where they're going to wind up in the hockey world. Blue Jackets, after a couple of days in between games, will be back on the ice on Sunday at Amelie Arena in Tampa. 7 o'clock face-off on Sunday night, the final game of the road trip. And then the Blue Jackets will return to Nationwide Arena on Tuesday. These are tough times. We all know that. The Blue Jackets are playing out the string. 
Uh, they are, you know, the young guys are being evaluated. The older guys are trying to fight their way through. They're trying to lead by example, all of those things, but it is a tough time and they're handling it as pros. And hopefully they can get a win on Sunday to wrap up this road trip before coming home to start to wind out the rest of the home schedule on the year. 6.30 is pregame coverage uh, on Sunday. You can hear that pregame coverage on the Blue Jackets Radio Network. You can see it on Bally Sports Ohio. And then a Monday mailbag is coming up for you, and I'm going to give you a little programming note. I'll be traveling home from Tampa on Monday. So the Monday mailbag, instead of being out first thing uh, in the morning, as it usually is, will probably be a little bit later in the day. But that doesn't mean you can't send your questions. I want you to. I want to know what you think. I want to know what uh, you'd like to know. And you can send those to me on Twitter or Instagram at Bobby Mac Sports. Also, you can record your question as a voice memo or a video, and you can email it to me, Bobby Mac, B-O-B-B-Y-M-A-C, at bluejackets.com. So that's what's coming up next with CBJ and 30. That'll be the Monday mailbag. I hope that you are a part of it. That's going to do it for today's edition of CBJ and 30, presented by Tell Ohio Credit Union. I'm Bob McElligot saying so long.